is 840 News Talk Saga 960 Raw. Mike Richards here on your Wednesday midweek. And it is always, it doesn't matter what time of day, it doesn't matter what uh, month it is. Gambling is always fun. Uh, look it up. It's in the Bible. It's in uh, uh, Ethesians uh, 10, 17. And for those saying, I don't think that's a chapter. No, it is. It's the, it's in the middle by the centerfold. Now, something called the best damn fantasy hockey podcast. Some people are saying, how dare you? How dare you make such a claim? Well, if you're talking to Pat DiGiovanni and Tony Luchasano, with names like that, do you really want to mess around? You want to, you want a shot at the title? Want a shot at the belt? You better be careful. People are saying, who are those guys? What is that, the, the, the midfielders from Napoli? No. <laughs> and it's not a law firm from Calabria. They are uh, not only very good friends, but of course it is the best damn fantasy hockey podcast. Had uh, a great time to have these guys on here now. Uh, Patrick hasn't seen you in a while. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Fratello Tony Luchisano, known as Luch, famous to the show. Uh, Fratello, come va? Tutto bene. I thought it was May the 4th, and we're already doing the uh, Kentucky Derby picks, but we'll do that in a month from now. I, I thought I was in a time warp there for a second. Well, hey, what, but it, it's coming up It's coming up fast, and uh, there have been some uh, races. I know Jimmy the Bag is already taking a look at some of the horses. Do you got a feel, do you got a feel already for, yeah, yeah, for there's, something? Yeah, there's one horse I like by the name of Arabian Night, and there's another one. Of course, I'm going to try to take a favorite by the name of Forte. Oh, Forte. strength, yes. strength. <laughs> Which is which is what we're talking about uh, this morning with the the uh, the podcast. Now, how long have you guys been uh, been doing that? Because uh, look, uh, podcasting is look at the foundation of it all is it should be fun, and I'm pretty sure by listening to some of it uh, that you probably have a pretty good time doing this. How long have you been doing this now for people listening here this morning? We're about uh, thirty episodes in, thirty plus. 30? So we, yeah, Whoa. so we we began. Uh, yeah, we began at the beginning of the year, beginning of the hockey season. Um, yeah, Luch reached out, was insisting. That we did a podcast together and I was denying him for, you know, good three, four months. And then finally I gave in and it's been a journey ever since. Well, it's, it's interesting, not only in the fantasy world, because now, you know, years ago, you know, I looked at people in fantasy sports and I'm like, what, what are they wearing Spock years? Like, what are they doing? What kind of delusional, you know, uh, Comic-Con people are dealing with it. And then as the world of, of gambling and gaming, it just increases uh, to the point where, you know, you, you on your phone. I don't know how many people have apps of 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 all the the access to to actual just gambling all the time. And once you started to see the same game parlay, so so you know, like for instance, Bet three six five. Really, what you're doing is you're just almost the lines are now blurred between what you would do when you look at fantasy hockey as opposed to how you would bet player props in a same game parlay. And when it comes to hockey. Look, I, I think, you know, for some people, when you're capping sports, hockey is the one thing that I stay away from uh, the most because it's very volatile. And sometimes what you think is going to happen doesn't simply because, at least in my opinion anyway, the NHL is the league that has the most parity of almost any league I can think of in the world. I don't care what league you're talking about, whether it's the ones here in North America or if you're talking about Serie A or the Prem or the Bundesliga. Yep. This is a league where from the top, to the bottom, if you don't pay attention, if the Boston Bruins don't pay attention playing Ottawa or Columbus or whatever you consider to be a bottom feeder, they could lose that game. I don't think there's any other sport that plays like that in the world. Well, last night was a perfect example with Boston losing to Nashville, right? Nashville is fighting for their playoff spot and Boston's trying to just wrap up the president's trophy. So you're right that the parody is unbelievable and it's hard to make money in hockey, but sometimes and paddle will attest to this you play streaks like you you play guys like you know you talk about shot props you talk about a guy like matthews who you know his over and under the other night was four and a half and he took 15 shots on net something we haven't seen since ray bork did it in 1991 where he took 19 shots on that so th those are the kind of things that you've got to look for and and pat i'm sure will will we'll add to that yeah, you have to kind of take a zoomed out approach when you're looking at how I notice, especially after diving in deeply this year, um, you really have to play the streaks like Luch said. Um, so what you think may happen on a given night might not exactly come to fruition, but 
two, three down the road. So you kind of have to stick with it. It's like kind of like baseball. If you're betting on the Yankees, they lose to the A's. Kind of got to take the Yankees the next time out and the next time out. Yeah, the other thing too that I think is interesting, and I was just looking uh, at some numbers here, for those that that like futures now, and it's grown. It used to be, you know, either to win the conference or a Stanley Cup, and it really wasn't much beyond that. Right now, I'm sitting looking at futures to reach the playoffs. Now, for a lot of it, you'll see that the, the money is so bad or whatever that it's not really, uh, it's not a play you want to make. And, and if you're doing it now, when there's only like five, six, seven games left, you really don't get the value in that kind of bet. However, I'm looking at the, 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 the numbers right now, and it's even changed since I've, I've looked at this. But the Calgary Flames are a 275. Now, there'd be some of those saying, well, you know, because it, it's, it, it's the Jets they'd have to catch. But after last night, and seeing how close it is. Now, it's a shame for Canadian playoffs that if the Flames did get in, the team that would be bounced would be another Canadian team in the Jets, which kind of sucks. But those that kind of number interests me only because Calgary has so badly underachieved this year that are they one of those teams, and Darryl, we've seen Daryl Sutter teams, including the one that won the Stanley Cup, when they just in the last week got in as an eighth seed with the Kings at that time. The only difference is, the Kings were favored at the beginning of that season to actually win a cup. They badly underachieved, but but I don't think anyone's thinking the Flames were the dominant team this year that were going to come in and beat everybody up. The, the, the Kings of their time were, and they were so bad that it took a, an incredible frenetic last like month to literally win every game. And then, of course, the bizarreness of that playoff where every series is goes to seven games. Every They had to win all these seven-game series. I don't put the flames in that c- category necessarily, but a Daryl Sutter team coming in late, maybe two, seven, five, maybe three times your money isn't, isn't uh, such a terrible thing. No, you guys ever look at futures. Absolutely. We do. And here, here's the reality. Our third, uh, the third part of our Holy Trinity in our, in our podcast, a, a gentleman by the name of Sebastian Pearson, who I've got to give shout outs to. He is the analytical wizard. And the one thing he has mentioned time and time again, is that, a lot of times Calgary is dominating games and they're just not getting the result. You've got to look at the fact that they've also had 15 games where they got the loser point. Oh, so they lost 15 points there, you know, so they're, they're on the precipice of just getting in. Now, if they get in and they play like they have been in terms of dominating the, the, the pace of play, I would not turn a blind eye to them in the playoffs. And at 60 to one right now, it could, you know, it could lightning could strike twice, like like it happened to Los Los Angeles. Pat, do you not agree on that one? Yeah, they're three points back right now, and uh, in terms of strength, the schedule down the stretch, they actually have the easiest schedule. So this week and uh, the ten days that come after it, they are playing the worst competition in the league. So Calgary's a dark horse at plus two seventy five is definitely a play, Mike. Now, when we start looking at different sports and in this particular case, we're talking about the, uh, the NHL. Sometimes you have go-tos like in different leagues. Uh, yeah. I think there was one year where I looked at uh, Odell Beckham's numbers with, uh, with, with the, with the Rams. And I was, I was making bank with him because he, he you know, obviously people were focusing on Cooper cup and there's a lot of things that happen. So, so he was a value to me at that time. Cause it, it doesn't last forever. And, and, and maybe you have to, you know, decide when you're on and off. Now, when it comes to hockey, when you're looking for the dude, it's hard to look probably past a, a Connor McDavid considering, you know, at 140 points and just what he does on a nightly basis. You probably look at dry sidle as well. Pat, I'll start with you. Do, do you have certain guys that you look at, you go on a given night in a given matchup, because it does change. Is there a guy who's, who has been just money for you? I like playing the dogs, man. I like taking, um, yeah, I like taking long shots. I mean, it's gambling at the end of the day. We're not playing for millions. So might as well try to hit the lottery. So I like doing goal scoring props. Um, Jacob Verina lately for the St. Louis blues, Kasperi Kapanen and former leaf. Those two have been lights out going forward. So that's what I mean. They're not going to score every game, but if you bet them to score, take the multiple goals, you can get some good odds 10 to one um, on, uh, on Verina last night to score two. So that was, that was a hell of a play. There's uh yeah, there's always, uh, I, that's how I like to play it. I don't necessarily like to take the chalk because there's no fun in just doubling your money. If right. you're playing for five, 10, 20 bucks. Um, yeah. Might as well go out there and try to hit a long shot. Yeah. And it's funny because here's the funniest part was we've been talking on our podcast about Minnesota's Matt Boldy 
And Matt Boldy the other night was 43 to one that he, last night. Uh, yeah, the other night that he was going to score a hat trick. 43 to one. Guess what he did? He scores a hat trick. <laughs> so, I mean, I wish I had played that, but I didn't. But at 43 to one, sometimes you take these shots, right? You put five or 10 bucks on and you go, okay, maybe he'll hit tonight. And that's what you've got to look for. You know, you got to look for those plays where you, you have a Matt Boldy because Kirill Kaprasov isn't playing and he's hurt. And yet Minnesota is one of the hottest teams in the league right now. And so I'd watch, I'd watch out for them because right now they're set up to play Seattle. And But Seattle on the other side has got one of the best road records at 24, 10, and, and 4. So it's like that's going to be a series in itself. No, nobody's talking about Minnesota and Seattle except for if you listen to our podcast. Pat and I and, and Seb will definitely be talking about that series. Well, there, there's some value on teams that maybe have been undervalued uh, in, in, in going into these playoffs. We talked about a dark horse. We talked about the Flames, possibly from an analytical standpoint, uh, causing some problems, maybe making some money on the side. Who else do you, would you put in that category of, of and, and Pat, you talked about, you know, going with underdogs, taking the dog a little bit. You know, uh, what do you see going in the playoffs that could be a moneymaker for you? How about the Islanders to play spoiler against the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, I'm if they meet in the first round, like the Islanders are going to be a tough out, I think. And Carolina, especially with, uh, especially with uh, Sveshnikov out of the lineup, they are going to be uh, shorthanded and they're a little undersized going against the Islanders. So that could be a play. Uh, the two, three series uh, in each division are really, you know, toss ups. But uh, in terms of a wild card matchup, that's the one I'm looking at. Luch, I'm, you know, with them on that one. The Islanders are always scary. But again, I look at Minnesota and Seattle is going to be a hell of a series only because Seattle is a team who's got 11 scorers, 11 players who are in double digit scoring, which is unbelievable for a team that's what in its second, third year in the league. Yep. So they're, they're doing unbelievable. But the other thing is whoever Vegas plays, if Calgary gets in that to me, will be a series and a half because again, you know, Vegas got trounced last night by Edmonton seven, three and Edmonton. And let's not throw out the Edmonton LA series. Oh my God. Especially with Jonathan quick, you know, um, or, or sorry, um, you know, having, the old goalie from Toronto there uh, trying to play who's going to start over there. Is it going to be, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Inner, Skinner. Skinner. Yes. Yeah, is, is the, they're going to go with this 400, $775,000 goalie, or are they going to take the ex leaf goalie there? Well, the, the, the West is a, is an absolute toss up, but you're talking from one till one till six, there's a difference of four points and the only reason Dallas is that far down is they've also had 14 overtime losses. They've got 14 of the loser points, even a handful, three, three more. If they have 11 of them, they're in first place. I mean, it, it, there is no room. Uh, I mean, again, of course, I'm watching Seattle the whole time, wondering just it does the bubble burst. I mean, they, they got off and they played pretty great most of the year. Now they have slid down a little bit, and this is obviously not a team that's seen playoffs. It's year number two. And you just, you know, you're, you, you wonder what's going to happen. Um, but I, I, you know, I can't help, but think of, you know, as we look at some of these dark horses and, and, and where we think some money is, I, I also think during the year, I, I also thought Buffalo would have a chance of making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I thought Buffalo at one point was getting in. And it's going to take for, I mean, uh, Pittsburgh is going to have to go on a three, four game losing streak, but the only problem is Florida's sitting there, but Florida has been garbage in the last uh, week or so. Uh, it, it's kind of a shame. Those that I wanted to see in and Buffalo being in the playoffs and I know Luch is close to your heart. I was really hoping the Sabres would get in this year. Yeah. So was I, and I'll leave it at that only for <laughs> you guys, you guys can feel my pain. I'm I, sure you can. And I hear it in the Montreal. Voice. Yeah, and losing to Montreal the other night, you know, in overtime, that kind of was a dagger or a saber in my heart, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> they also had the bad one to Columbus earlier. Oh, yeah, February 28th, if you're scoring can't at home. That. Now, you, can't, you, <laughs> yeah. can't, you can't lose those games. Those are the games, you know. And now moving forward, when we talk about playoff strategy and players you're going to take against, like it's different from the regular season. We talk about it a lot on our on our podcast. And, you know, we're going to be doing our draft on uh, the Friday night before the playoffs start. And the key is, you know, which players do you take in the playoffs? Like, are you going to go heavy on Leafs and they could lose first round? Or are you going to go heavy on Tampa Bay? Or, you know, everyone's going to probably start taking Bruins off the top and taking Colorado Avalanche players. But, you know, where is the, 
where is the key mar- uh, matchups and who are the key players that you're going to take on all these what, other teams? What about a well? team like the What about the team like the Devils? Oh. Yeah, Jack Hughes, Pat's MVP this year. That's interesting. Yeah, that was a long shot that I liked at the beginning of the year. Jack Hughes, seventy-five to one for MVP. That didn't really, you know, didn't really come in, but it was close. Kid got forty, and I'm optimistic for for the following year. But the Devils, the Devils are going to be in tough against the Rangers. I don't know if they have the goaltending to do it. Um, it, it's going to be like the margins between the two, three series in each division. They're so slim that, I mean, it's a toss up really. Like, are you going to give the Rangers out of a hundred? If you're going to give the Rangers 55, maybe to 45, uh, against the devils, I think that's what we're looking at here. So I, I don't really feel confident in terms of picking teams from, from that. I would much rather stick to, in this case, chalk, um, yeah. going with Colorado, going with Boston, I think, but even Boston, I mean, could be primed for an upset. You got to go against Sidney Crosby, man. So there's no guarantees there either. Yeah. yeah there, and, and look, if there's anything we learned about, uh, you know, looking at favorites and those that, uh, you know, have a recency bias, uh, just look at March Madness. Uh, you know, you, you know, you, you go with the blue bloods, you go, you think, you know what you're talking about, but the problem is it's again, it's all about matchups and sometimes, and just sometimes there's, you know, well, in that case, there's schools that you don't follow. People aren't following uh, Florida Atlantic. They're not, fairly dickinson i don't think there's a lot of those in toronto and and all of a sudden you know you get to these situations where the unknown and the dog world is the good world you you want to be where you're getting stuff not giving it away and i think that i think you're right pat i think this is a a playoffs that's going to be exactly like that so look fellas we'll do this again this was a lot of fun uh there was certainly lots to talk about uh good luck with the podcast the best damn yeah, I mean the, the language. Yes, uh, so uh, a very uh, a very bold uh, uh, podcast. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I blame Pat for that. <laughs> yeah, grazie mille, mille uh, for that. It was uh, amazing, Pat. Uh, Tony, we'll talk to you very soon. Maybe an, over a nice uh, Asobuco, which you know is my favorite. I, Sounds Asobuco, good, Mike. Uh, very good. What do you think, Luke's Asobuco? Yeah, I, I'd go for that. Yeah, no, we're. You know, to... I'm eating meat now. Eh? Well, see, this is good now. This is now everyone's with you now. We, we were against you before. He's now got we're friends again. Yeah. <laughs> Chef of the Amel. Ciao, boys. There you Ciao, go. Mike. Thanks, Michael. Uh, that is uh, Tony and Pat joining us here doing a little uh, hockey fantasy. Great stuff here this morning. It's 8.57.